Hey guys, I had to work on a Ducati and I came across a, a relay that was a little different than what I'm used to from the automotive world. And I did some research online and I found some articles but none of them really had a video like this or really went into the depth that I'm hoping this video will allow you to understand this relay. Um, the relay is broken up into really two different um, components. I'll go over that in just a second. Let's go over this. So you see two posts here. Obviously they're for high current. And then you have, if you can see here, this has a tab that connects to this side, to this fuse. Whereas this side does not. It's very simple. B stands for battery. But what I've noticed is not all relays are marked, but it's easy to tell what should go to battery because battery is the one where it's connected to this fuse. And we'll go over that, why that is in a second. B stands for battery, the one connected to the fuse, and M, in this case, went to the load, which was the starter on this Ducati I worked on. Um, these two here, terminals, are the control for the relay. If you're able to pass current through it, you'll close the relay, allowing power to go from here to here. Okay, now let's talk about these fuses. They're actually quite, they threw me off. Um, this fuse is actually just a spare. There's nothing in here, if you can see. Whereas this actually is connected. What it's doing is it's taking battery power running through the fuse and going to these two terminals. So you can use that to power something else. That makes sense to, ex to be used on a motorcycle to conserve space. Okay, so let's go over what this relay looks like. This is an overall view of it. Yes, I know it looks like C3PO, but I assure you it's a motorcycle relay. Okay, this is the overall schematic of the relay, everything in the box here. Um, like a classic relay, when current is allowed to flow through this coil, it closes this switch, which then allows current to flow from B to M, and in this case, it was hooked to the starter motor, would then engage the starter. Um, the fuse is always connected to battery when you connect to the B terminal. It always allows uh, power to be available here, and you'd use this to power another uh, uh, circuit. In this case, it's non-ignition switch. It's right to the battery. Of course, on some, ba uh, some motorcycles or other configurations, this could be switched power. But nonetheless, the point is, is this circuit has nothing to do with this up here. If there's power at B, there's power down here. This is classically how you would wire it. This is how I wired it on the Ducati. I took the negative post of the control and went right to battery. And then the positive went to the start button on the right handlebar. So when you push the button to start the motorcycle with ignition on, of course, because ignition on, this is switched on the real motorcycle. This is switched power. So when you switch to the on, the key to the on position, power is available here. When you push the button, it closes this, sending current through this coil, closing the switch, and then engaging the starter. This represents the control. So these two terminals are the control right here. Um, it doesn't matter the which way they are um, for that. But anyway, so this post goes there, that's there. So that's how you, that's the control side of the relay. This right here is the B and M. B stands for battery, M for motor, and that corresponds here in the schematic. This is the fuse. This fuse in the schematic represent, and the physical relay uh, represents that on the schematic. These two terminals here represent the power output that goes through the fuse right here. Hi, um, I'd like to do a quick 
short video on how to test uh, this relay. Um, it's from a, a motorcycle. I was working on a Ducati and the owner um, wanted me to test the relay out. And I did research and it didn't really have any v content on the uh, internet that really that made it easy for me. So I'm hoping this makes it easy for you. Let's go over the relay construction. It's very unique to me anyway. Um, not all of them have B and M on them. B stands for battery. That means it would be connected to the positive post to the battery. M goes to the motor. In this case, this was uh, used to power the starter. And if you notice, these are big, hefty uh, terminals because the starter uh, requires a lot of current. So let's go over these fuses. What are these? Well, first off, this fuse is just a spare. They're 30 amp fuses. So if you look, this, remember this goes to the battery. This terminal right here, this little tab goes right through this fuse and connects to these two rear terminals. So that means when the battery is connected here, it's non-switched. It goes right to the battery. These are always hot. So these two terminals can have a maximum of 30 amps through them before the fuse will, will um, blow. These two terminals are the control terminals to the relay. So if you apply current through these two terminals, it will connect these two. So that would, let's say, start your, your motorcycle. When you hit the start button, current is allowed to flow between these two terminals, connecting these two, allowing voltage to go from this terminal to this terminal, which would then go to your starter. Well, how do we test it? Well, first off, let's look at my setup before we go forward. I have a, a battery charger here. Um, make sure your battery charger is outputting some chargers like this is uh, one of my other ones, some chargers won't, they turn themselves off if there's no current flowing. This one's sort of an old school, old one. Well, let's uh, check it out. So I have it on voltage here. I'm not sure if you can see the screen. You have to take my word for it if you can't. And what I have is on the negative side of the charger right here is a switch. On the positive side, I have a fuse and it goes to this terminal right here. So now let's make sure how much um, voltage and I have it at 10 amps. Um, I was surprised this relay takes about five amps, which I found very interesting, um, a relay taking that much current. Anyway, so it's at zero now. If I turn it on, I get 12 volts. So what that's showing me so far is that my charger is working, my switch works, and all my connections to here are working. Okay, so now let's test the relay. I'm going to change my meter to ohms. I'm going to make it beep when the when it's touching. Two, the two terminals are touching. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Let me break this apart. Put these back on. So when these two terminals touch or, you know, uh, current could flow between two, you'll hear a beep. There we go. So as of right now, the relay should be open. Notice no beep. So now I'm going to, just to uh, review, I'm going to connect to this terminal and that terminal. Nothing's happening because no current is flowing through the control side of the relay. I'm now going to turn it on, which will allow current to flow through these two wires, making the relay close, and we should hear a beep because it should connect these two posts. Let's see. It does. You can hear the hum of the, of the coil, and you can hear this. There you go. In this case, this relay works. Um, let's go a little further. Let's test the, 
these fuses here. So I'm going to take this cover off. I'm going to connect here. This post here of the fuse, that works. Now we're seeing if the relay, uh, if the, I'm sorry, if this fuse is blown. Because if I go to the other side and it was blown, I would not get, I would get, I would, it couldn't flow and I would not get the beep. In this case, that means the fuse is good. Now I'm going to test these two back terminals. So therefore, based on these tests, this relay is good. Fuse is good, relay is working, and there you go. Again, this is a spare, if I didn't say that before. Thank you for watching. I hope you found the information helpful.